Kathy Rupert, founder of Rupert Law Group. We handle exclusively E2 and E1 visas. So no matter what treaty country you're from or where you want to be, we can help. And today we have a very special guest and an old friend of the firm, Patrick Findaro, co-founder of Visa Franchise. Hey, Patrick. Angie, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great. Together again. We've been Thanks, doing please. these every once in a while for years now. It's great to have you back. Oh, for sure. Both of us yeah. very focused on E2s, a lot of clients over this over this period. So yes, definitely. And we've worked together with, we were just talking about a couple of clients we're working together with now. And over the years, we've done lots together. So for sure. Looking forward to more of that. Yeah. So Patrick, tell us, give us the the uh uh i guess uh bullet points about visa franchise and what they do for e2 uh investors and kind of how it works with someone looking at a visa as opposed to just opening a franchise as a u.s citizen or something like that yeah for sure so my brother and i started visa franchise back in 2015 and i was already working with franchise investments but for another visa category the eb5 as you know, 800K or a million, 50,000, depending where you invest. So I discovered the E2 visa back in 2014, a year before we founded the company. And we just saw that this visa category was extremely flexible. I already had experience with franchising. I saw that if you chose the, the right franchise, the right system, it really lowers your, your chances of, of failure, um, as well as you have a much clearer picture of when you're going to open, when you're going to break even, when you're going to make $5,000. So with franchising, we saw it was a good fit for the E2 visa. Not the only way is you have clients that do startups or buying an existing uh, business. Uh, but we saw that startup franchise or a franchise resale made a lot of sense for the E2 visa. So that's what we've been doing. And we also have a sister company. Um, we're the owners of Vetted Biz, which is the largest database for for franchises. So we have a lot of data that supplements the the consulting and advisory work that we do for our E2 visa clients at Visa Franchise. Amazing, and I know you've helped so many people uh, with us, without us, all over the place. So it would be great I, for anybody looking for um, a franchise opportunity. Patrick and the crew at Visa Franchise are great because they have so many options too, right? And um, but most importantly, because I've noticed this in life, and maybe you have too, when you have way too many choices, sometimes it's a little overwhelming. So I know one of the things that you guys do too is help people narrow it down to something that first of all they're going to enjoy, second of all they could be successful at. So they don't have 35 businesses to choose from. They have two or three that are really going to fit their skills, interests, investment level, things like that, right? Yeah, exactly. So for our clients that right now, most of them we have a monthly retainer with, the first couple of weeks, it's more exploratory, learning more about them, mm -hmm. where they want to invest, how much money, what industries, how many hours they're going to be able to allocate in the business. What were their functional expertise? Were they really good at sales? Were they really good at managing people? And from there, we go out, see what franchises are available, whether it's opening from zero or acquiring an existing franchise. Yes. And generally in five business days, we're able to narrow it down to four or five options that best fit the, the criteria that we agreed upon um, together with the, the investor. Yeah, I think that's great because it's so helpful to... You know, the United States is a big world and uh, kind of just having some direction and some hand holding a little bit up front really helps a lot. We find that as well with our clients. But today I really wanted to talk about some of the trends. Now, you know me as as when we work together, I always like the service based the businesses. They typically are a little bit faster for investors. They can be a little bit slightly lower price point. Um, I always tell people though, if it's your dream to open up a dog house or something similar, then do it. But if you're kind of looking for something that's a little bit quicker, maybe a little bit more streamlined, service-based are great. I know you kind of feel the same way. Tell me a little bit about some trends right now. Like what are some hot service-based businesses that could work? Yeah, great question. So I would say, Trends go in, in two different ways. Like if you're looking at like what business owners like to do, what consumers really like, those are kind of a, attractive businesses, yeah. they generally make less money. Um, so if it's something that's like a, a fitness franchise, 
um, some type of um, franchise that people really enjoy doing, it's generally not going to make as much money. But in terms of making money and getting open fast, um, junk removal is hot. Staffing junk businesses. Removal. Interesting. Well, let's talk about junk removal for a minute. I'm very interested in that. Um, personally and and from an E2 visa perspective. But so what types of things are involved in junk removal and what are the hot geographic areas for junk removal? Yeah, no, for sure. So on our on our um on our channel Vetted Biz, we we've interviewed the the founder of 1 800 Got Junk, which has been around for a long time. And unfortunately, there's not really much geographic area left. You have to buy an existing one that's generally going to be over a million dollars to buy. Um, Junk King, which is also based in, in California, they have resale opportunities throughout the state of California, and there's a few key markets that they're expanding in, as well as uh, Accelerated Waste Solution, which um, has one of their um, brands, consumer-facing brands, is, is Junk Shot, um, and they're expanding throughout the United States. They're based in Florida, but they're opening up locations throughout the U.S. Um, all of those brands have had E2 Visa investors in the past. Um, and with junk removal, especially where there's great demographic trends and where people are moving commercial or residential, uh, there's generally going to be uh, a solid uh, opportunity for the landlord to engage your services or for, for the tenant. Very interesting. I love that. So, you know, and I think you're right. I mean, anybody that watches Hoarders knows very well about 1-800-GOT-JUNK, right? But... You bring up an excellent point and something that I think people need to know is it's like there are usually a variety. This is the great thing about America, right? There's always competition. So if that's kind of all sealed up, which it sounds like it is for the most part. Well, if, unless I'm you sure, have the money because. Right. Or you like want to do that. 100 kind of, got junk. I think the average sales are like 2.7 mil. So if someone's making right. like 400 K, 500 K hauling junk, they're going to sell that for like. 1.5, 2 million dollars. So right. you could buy it, but most E2 visa investors it's more like 150, so, 200. They're not they're not investing millions. That's right. And you don't want the northern Alaska region either. Yeah. Nobody wants that, right? <laughs> I guess unless you're coming from northern Finland or something. But other than that, nobody wants that. But the point is, there are these other franchises as well, right? And it's same general vibes. I'm sure there are some differences among them, but there's there's something else out there. If that's something that appeals to you, there's an opportunity. Um, love that. And obviously, where the people are, the junk is, right? Uh, for sure. So junk removal, that's awesome. I love that. And I love having a couple of things for people to think about. I never recommend any businesses for anyone because I have no idea what they like or they don't. But it is interesting uh, as that kind of category. I think that's awesome. What else were you mentioning was a good kind of trend and a service home, business? Home care, home care staffing. So Tell it's us a business about that. that you're going to have a lot of people. So you basically set up a caregiving staffing agency. Depending on the state, it's going to be more regulated or le less regulated. California, Florida, pretty regulated. There's other states that you, I believe, as of today, you don't need a license to operate, so you can get, get it open really fast um, and, and start the, the staffing agency. But effectively, you're, you're providing caregivers mostly to elderly people in a certain area. So think the Sunshine States where people are retiring. California has the, the largest senior population followed by Florida, and then it just goes through, through the Sun Belt. Um, so that's a business that first year you're, you have 10, 20 caregivers. And then in the year five, you might have 50 plus caregivers. So it's not for the faint of heart. It's a business that will generate a lot of work, um, could lead to other visa categories like the EB-5, EB-1C, if you have a related affiliate, maybe EB-2NAW, all different types of green card options because you're creating a lot of jobs. And the U.S. Mm -hmm. likes jobs, whether it's for the E-2 visa or, or other categories. And not many people want to be running an organization with 50 employees. So that that is a, uh, a turnoff for many people, especially when they're changing countries. But we've had clients that have had me mega success. Um, and it's a very clear path to hit a million dollars in revenue. 
most of the franchises in that space, the average revenue is between a million to two million dollars. So if you're doing a margin of 18 percent on a million, 180K is not bad in most places in the U.S. And if you get that up to two million dollars of revenue, you're making what, 300K? Uh, that's not bad for a business that you had invested 100K, invested 120K to open up. That being said, it's a lot of work. So you got to yes. be willing to roll up your sleeves and you're going to work 40, 50, 60 hours, maybe more, just depending on what the business needs. That's interesting. We've had we've had some of those as well. Certainly, I've noticed that trend just with us in the last three or four years, but right with the aging population, right? And kind of trends just socially in the United States. You know, it used to be when we were little kids and our great grandmas went to the nursing home, right? And people don't want to do, I mean, they didn't want to do that either. Let's be honest, but they didn't really have an option, right? So now people are trying to figure out this option. Um, how can they stay at home? You know, uh, even with light stuff, right? Cooking, medications, running errands, things like that. Maybe you're not needing a hospital, but need some kind of assistance. I think it's great. Um, and I think you mentioned another one that was popular, another real type estate of property franchise. management. Today, yeah. we've had over 100 clients invest in real estate property management, ranging from vacation rentals, long term residential, so contracts over 12 months, uh, managing homeowner associations. And even some clients have gone the, the commercial property management route. But that's kind of like a mainstay that a lot of people that want to enter in the real estate space in the United States will get into real estate property management. They make their connections there. They have the market color. And then they go into real estate development uh, or just more on the brokerage. Or some of them just focus on continuing to grow their property management business. We have one client in L.A. County who manages over 400 properties. So that's a business that's he started from zero in 2016 with a lot of work and not so much time. Six years, he's been able, six or seven years, he's been able to manage 400 homes. That's awesome. I love that. I like the property management. We have some requirements about how many, you know, you should have some things yeah. going, not just managing your own, right? That's yes. going to be a, a key how there. How many doors? Yes, how many doors? That's right. The more the merrier. That's what I always tell people with investments, employees, and doors. Everybody says how much. And I said, the more the merrier, always. So um, yeah, I think that's great. And and definitely one that we hear a lot about um, and get questions about a lot. So it's nice to know that there are some options. We just had an approval on a, a property management company in Canada last week maybe the week before you and i are working on two right now together some property management so i think it's great as long as they meet the requirements i think it's wonderful um definitely and i think those are those are three really interesting options you know as a sidebar things like right um uh i, I think roofing that's a big one like gutter repair cleaning services things yes. like that i presume you guys have some in all of those yeah, we've had client like one client did a kitchen and bathroom modeling he cleared a million i think it was just two and a half years running the business Perfect. so that's a key if you want if you're looking to get the visa and also support your family the margins on the businesses are going to vary but there should generally be a clear path to hitting a million dollars of revenue if there's not, you have to really look into the business and and be a be you know thinking is this the right one for me or am I going to be doing something else after three years that I work with Angie to build in the business plan somehow? Yeah, yeah, I think that's interesting and it's great to and this is one of the things that's great right about working kind of in a partnership is you guys are looking for different things than we are, but they're all yeah. really important. Right. So I think that's something for somebody who's like, oh, I'm going to do it on my own or I'm going to do this and or only just have one person help me with that. You know, there's something to be said for working with a team because I everybody's going to point out some different things. Yeah, I think you can do it on your own, but generally people that amass like 200K to invest, it's worth like the advisors. Yes. If someone's going to yes. like put together yes. an E2 visa investment at 30 or 40K, they're single, their net worth is 45,000. They don't they don't have their kids that they're gonna be moving. Okay, yeah, I understand. Maybe, maybe you uh roll the dice. The dice. And, and that's fine. But if you're if you have the assets, if you have the income potential, 
And if you're moving your kids too, you don't want to mess around where there could be a delay and you have to go back into the consulate. But every every situation is unique. Yes, everybody is unique, but I think it's really important to know that you know when it's when you talk about moving to another country, particularly the United States, it's a big country. There's a lot going on. I think you're going to find that it's very friendly, but having some different professionals helping you in different areas is only going to help. So, you know, working with people like Patrick, like me, who work with teams, you know, we've got different things going on. So you can have some assistance and some help in other ways. Key as far as as far as we're concerned. I know you feel the same with that. Yeah, what comes down is we end up doing a lot of cases and you end up doing a lot of cases in your sphere of, of immigration. And with that, uh, the client's able to get the best result where yeah. there are some one-stop shop solutions that, you know, one firm I can think of when our client was denied the visa where they do every visa. They're not just focused on E2s and E1s like yourself, uh, family, you name it. They do uh, accounting services. They do everything. And oh the client was, the petition wasn't well put together. The client was denied and they had to switch to another another attorney. So yeah. I think it comes down to volume. And when you're choosing an advisor, make sure they do a lot of whatever you're getting from that That's advisor. Right. That's right. I think you're right about that. And it's in the name, right? It's Visa Franchise. Yeah. Visa Franchise. That's what they do. So it's great. And it's great to see you again, Patrick. Thanks Likewise, so much Angie. for joining. We're going to put Patrick's uh, contact info after this video along with ours. So if you are in the market for a franchise or an E2 or both, you know who to contact. Thanks so much, Patrick. It's great to speak with you today. Thanks, Angie.